we will move on to our next speaker, that is Floris Bogaert. Floris Bogaert obtained his uh, Master in Water Management at the TU Delft in 1998. Uh, and after a few years uh, in, uh, working in, uh, as, a, in a, as a consultant in a consulting agency, TAO, he has also returned partly to the TU Delft to perform PhD research in water management. The contribution he's going to present today is uh, the result from a collaboration between the, these two institutes, as well as by two other institutes, which are uh, Waternet and uh, Penin Water Group. Please, yes. the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I have a short talk about uh, augmented reality, uh, w which we use in some uh, projects, mainly international projects. You see a lot of labels uh, left uh, down corner. I'm not going to explain them all, but uh, they will uh, get into into the presentation. So. Um, first of all, I would like to start off with the pilot Vatgasmeer. That's where the augmented reality is uh, is applied. Some of the problems and uh, some solutions uh, done by flood mapping, for example. And afterwards, it's mainly about communication. It's about participation of people. It's uh, visualizing solutions to make a, a transnational knowledge on these uh, problems and solutions by augmented reality. There's some conclusions and some uh, work in progress. We're not finished with augmented reality yet, so uh, we're still continue and I would like uh, uh, anyone to participate uh, uh, along the way. So, a lot of lines about the project, but Waadgasmeer is one of the, the, the areas in Amsterdam which is uh, a low-lying area. It's, one, it's, it's the lowest area, actually. It's minus 5.5 meters. So, uh, that raises a lot of problems, actually. And uh, with all the problems we have in mega cities, uh, as you can see here, flooding problems, there, uh, there's no space for water, there's uh, the quality of water, which uh, is, uh, is not really good in that area. And, of course, there's a question of... Uh, do we have to implement a lot of measures or should we adapt like these guys are doing? So, and we're coming with solutions here. So we would like to see if we can uh, uh, do some more with energy, for example, and other chances and uh, to uh, improve the, the cycle issues. Well, to just focus on some of the problems, the existing uh, uh, drainage system uh, is pretty old. We have to get uh, uh, it out, actually reconstruct it. You can see it's clogged in the way, and that actually comes to some floodings, not so severe as you can see on the on the television, but it was uh, uh, only uh, 10 millimeters in an hour, for example, and uh, water is on the streets, and that causes a lot of disruption uh, in that area. So. So, and of course, there are a lot of solutions. We did a lot of workshops on this uh, project and uh, solutions, thermal pavement, green roofs, bio swales. Uh, I think we have uh, seen them all. But uh, the main question in this project as well, since we have a lot of participants, a lot of stakeholders from different uh, nationalities and different uh, backgrounds, is which of these um, uh, solutions is the best and especially speaking one language is very hard if you have a architect spatial planner you have technical issues you have consultants uh, water authority with the laws so uh, that mainly um, will induce actually that you would like to have some uh, good communication about it and visualization so um, so many participants on this uh, project there's a in the paper there's a, a, a whole a view on uh, people participation what you can use so we'll skip that part uh, for this one. But believe me, technical, governance, social, legal, budget, maintenance is a lot of issues that should be dealt with in this project. So, what we don't need is probably a thick guidance book, but uh, need interactive communication tools. And there are some communication tools we can use. So, for example, this is uh, if you have a solution, you can build up a full-scale model in the lab and uh, watch it, and people can understand how water would flow through a system like that. Or Congress, like we are here today, there are some interactive meetings. But I think more the interactive of uh, innovating tools would be uh, 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 using touch screens and doing calculations uh, on the spot, for example. See what IDs people have from the roads or from green and calculate them uh, on the spot. Then there's serious gaming. Uh, there's a, a talk already this morning. I will give a talk tomorrow about Watertown, which is an international game as well. And, uh, but now we focus on augmented reality, using iPhones and information to make uh, things visual in the, in the area. 
So, augmented reality. Well, we had a workshop on the International Water Week in Amsterdam. Uh, and it was quite interesting to see so many people uh, that uh, were attending and we used all these interactive uh, communications tools as much as possible. So we had the touch screen, we had interactive uh, communication tools like augmented reality and that proved that we had a lot of solutions like I showed you before. So one of the tools we used was height maps, uh, so level modeling, for example. So if this uh, uh, flooding occurs, you can see some red dots were really low, and those are the, 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 the areas that the people in the workshop had to focus on. So and that proved that a lot of, uh, of these measurements were in the right place. So um, of course, you can make these models uh, flow patterns from, uh, from height models. So uh, what you can see here, for example, is that a lot of water would go to this square in this area and one of the solutions is a water square that's been implemented in Rotterdam, for example. And for the international people, maybe some of interest, Johan Cruijff lives here very near the football player. So there's a augmented reality tour that you can uh, visit that I will show you some later and there are some interesting things about it. So. And uh, like I said, there were a lot of solutions on different spots and now you can fit it in. So it's like a puzzle you did with a lot of stakeholders and uh, it was quite interesting to see that they came up, especially because it was an international group, that they came up with uh, rainwater gardens from Australia or the bio swills from, from around and uh, there's some storage underneath of the houses, for example, which made a wide variety of, uh, of solutions where we were very happy with. But we had some problems with explaining people what would they look like. Like, what is a rainwater garden? What would it be in my street? Because you have to give up a parking space, for example. So, in that case, we, uh, we used visualization tools. About the flood mapping, if you want some more information, uh, look for uh, Death of the Gully. It's a uh, presentation of uh, the SATS conference latest in uh, Coventry. And it's about what you can do instead of uh, traditional engineering, uh, uh, like uh, drainage systems. So. But back to augmented reality. This is Amsterdam. We're around here. And this is Waadgrasmeer, the lowest point of Amsterdam, minus 5.5. And these are some point of interest. Well, if you zoom in, you can see some point of interest. There are 36 of them you can visit with your iPhone. So, um, well, let's focus on uh, just one of them. This is Juliana Park, it's called. And if you go there with your iPhone, just take a stop at the Amstel station and go out. And if you look on your iPhone or your Android, you will uh, see some points of interest and Juliana 5 is one of the first of them. So, and then you will be here. Does anybody know what this is? Well, this is the moment, yeah, of course, you don't have felt nose. Well, this is the point that you get your iPhone out and you will try to get some information. This is a sediment basin. And just to explain you what you can see in the field, because this is very hard to explain without visual aids, uh, this is, I have, to, I have to get to the front. Uh, this is the, the blue lines is the, the rainwater system, for example. Can I move around? Yeah, that's better. The, the blue lines is the, the rainwater system, uh, what we can see here. And actually, there were a lot of quality problems. This is at the Amstel station, so there's a lot of trams, there's a lot of uh, uh, traffic around it. So uh, basically, uh, they had to transport it to the uh, sewage treatment plant, or they could use a sheet piling, as you can see here, and they made a basin. So here's the, the inlet from the, from the sewer system from all around and it will go into a basin just by a sheet pile and then over here. And the question was uh, what kind of uh, removal efficiency rate would a system like that have? So, and what you could see from, from this one, you just see the sheet piling here. I think a lot of people would have asked the question what it actually is. But what it looks like, because the sediment basin, you know, rainwater is clean, but is it? This is after eight years. There was one and a half meter of sludge, highly polluted sludge in that area on the basin. So it worked on that occasion uh, very well. So, uh, but how would it look like uh, if you just go there and if you go to the area now, you could see people with iPhones and watching to that uh, sediment basin and get lots of information, as you can see here, from a lot of documents and go to the website. And from that location, you can actually go to a new point of interest in that area, so 36 of them, so, uh, so have a, a nice straw. And actually we had a pilot, and this is the, the skills integration project. Uh, it's uh, uh, again with a lot of countries, and uh, we tried to, to see if a person from the UK would go to that area and ha uh, would be able to make a tour of all these uh, points. 
And this is Sid Simpson, for example, from the, the Bradford uh, municipality. And he made a, a complete tour for an hour with just using his iPhone and reading information out. And uh, it was quite nice to see that he did very well. So, uh, uh, okay, so the, the outcomes of the, the, the workshop here. I think using augmented reality is just a visualization, it's an aid to uh, let people participate, was uh, that people were uh, really enthusiastic to uh, uh, participate and it, they found it very easy to gather information from their iPhone and later to the, the, the website that they, uh, they could visit. Uh, it really helped understanding the context, the circumstances and the problems that really helped in the workshop to get to better solutions in this case. So, uh, and there were suggestions made to improve the augmented reality, because still it was a 2D uh, vision, to go to 3D and maybe focus more on the things you cannot see. Because there are a lot of things that we cannot see and you can make them visible with the augmented reality. So this is a 3D model of that basin, for example, as you can see here. But it shows all the drainage systems and the cables and the lines in all the area, which is quite impressive. And people wanted to implement solutions here, which is quite difficult if you have so many cables and stuff. So uh, revealing what is underground can be of a lot of use, actually, on these, uh, these projects. So this is, uh, and I hope you can see it, a video, but probably it's uh, not too much time for it, but here's a 3D visualization of that whole uh, basin. So what you can see is uh, it projects above the, the, the basin, so you can see and have an impression how big it is and how deep it is and get all the information from this. So, uh, conclusions, I think, uh, uh, well, augmented reality proved in these projects uh, actually that it was a, a good communication tool to get people understanding uh, the problems and the solutions of it. So, uh, and actually a lot of uh, stakeholders were involved because of these uh, innovating tools and were more enthusiastic to, uh, to participate in these, uh, these projects. And of course it will be uh, uh, further developed and a lot of suggestions are made to, to come up with, uh, with new, uh, new uh, augmented reality things. Some of them, just in short, I talked already about 3D visualization. Uh, uh, linking it with social media, for example, could be very interesting to see uh, flow heights and uh, try uh, to, to, to use that. Uh, to be awareness, for example, of buildings, how much water they use, to, to try to people that uh, they would use less water, for example, is one of the things we could do with augmented reality. And show before drainage systems, which could be of use of uh, 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 visualization, what is under the ground. So, well, last, not least, more info. Actually, go to this site and you will get a lot of info on how to uh, get layer and, uh, and uh, make the tour. And if you just go to that area, you could uh, use it. And there's a lot of more information, actually, on the paper, the reference, with a lot of videos. You can see the 3D model and, uh, and et cetera. So, that's actually what I wanted to say. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Some questions. Yeah, uh, Marta Buitenkamp, Anantis. Um, you said that uh, with augmented, augmented reality you can reach other groups than you can reach with the well, traditional uh, communication uh, methods. Could you tell something about those other groups? Who are they? Yeah, yeah. Well, mainly it's very hard to get uh, residents from the area in projects like this. And uh, most of the people that were new uh, into this, because they went to the website uh, and had iPhones, we could reach those people. Because mainly, uh, uh, sorry to say, but mostly there are more elderly people involved. And, uh, and to reach the younger people, so to say, that was a really uh, uh, a new group, actually. And yeah. Dutch and not Dutch? Well, mainly, yeah, the, uh, uh, Dutch, yeah, in this area. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's all in English, so we used it for International Water Week, for example, or uh, the skills integration, new technologies. But then you really ship people in to do it. So, uh, but for these projects, with Tondorp, for example, which is a really uh, Dutch part, uh, most youth from that area was quite interested to see what is actually in their environment. So, yeah. Okay, Nimal up from Copenhagen Wastewater Innovation. You say you get them involved. How do they? How are they able to communicate with you? Is it like they can get feedback also through this uh, app? 
Yeah, good question. Mainly uh, it was uh, uh, used in the workshop so we get feedback from them uh, in the workshop. But you can push uh, I like, for example, if you if you were in some uh, or, uh, location. So mainly we got from that that they liked the uh, uh, location. But I think the communication could always be improved, of course. But now it's really a tool that we used because it's not a tool that, that exists on, the, uh, on itself. You, you should use it in an interaction like a workshop or the field trips, which is a very important thing of projects. It's just walking around and getting uh, to know, for example, seeing that it's minus 5.5 meters. Uh, if I say it, you don't have a, a sense of it. But if you really go to that area, you will see a dike and you uh, watch from, uh, from it below. And then you see how urban dense, for, for example, and how low the area is. And for that, uh, actually, uh, uh, well, application, that, that's very important to uh, visualize it by this way. Yeah. Yeah, Hanneke Schumat from Royal Haskoning DHV. Uh, it looks impressive. Is it really that you look through the iPhone and you see the 3D image? Yeah. yeah? So yeah. you developed quite a lot of software for it or was it available already on the... No, it's, it's mainly available. You have to do the 3D modeling and then put it in a layer. I didn't do the modeling myself. But it's, it's really 3D. So if you walk around it, you see the, the, the storage tank, you see it move. So it's, uh, okay. it's quite nice to see. I will have a look yeah. at your... Okay. Things. Yeah. Um, related to that, maybe also a question, what was your main audience, for instance, for the Watergraaf Meer project? Was it maybe peop mainly people from the neighborhood? Or did you, and what did you want to get out of that? Was it creating awareness or also really, will it, will it uh, influence your decision making on the final <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, project? basically there, there were a lot of reasons. We got so many uh, applicants to the workshops with so many be uh, different backgrounds that it was, uh, uh, we need to, to, to do something basically. But the, the main object was of course decision making. Uh, we had some solutions and uh, w which we well uh, liked as an audience and the most liked we would like to implement. So uh, uh, actually it was more... And it's really the most liked that you take or did... Not all. The, uh... <laughs> There's a lot in the paper on the, how the workshop uh, worked but uh, I think that, that was the main interest to show people that if you have a solution that they're really aware of how it looks like and how it will look like. Because otherwise they would say yes or no to something that they don't really uh, have a uh, have an idea of how it how it uh, is visualized so you have any idea on how many people you reached from your target uh, audience? With the workshops it's about, I think, uh, 150 people just in the workshops. But then again, if you see how many people downloaded the, the guideline for uh, moving around on the iPhone, it's more, it's like 200 or 250, so, yeah. And this was available for people in the neighborhood or also for yeah, other mainly, people interested? Mainly about the neighborhood. Yeah. Because I presume yeah. maybe other Because that's the most important target group, of course, you, you want to ha have. Wow. So, and it, it, it's, uh, you know, you have procedures that they can speak up uh, to measurements, that, uh, to, to uh, <coughs> uh, solutions that are not really theirs or uh, have problems with. I mean, it really helps them to, to come up with, uh, with uh, projection or, or anything. So, okay. yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Frederik Hervis Dijnert, Nederlands Schuurmans. I was wondering, um, you do the visualization, and it really looks awesome. I think the idea is really, really great. Um, you said you, can, you could project uh, water levels as well, but do you also do the step in between the computation, or is that you can present results? Well, does it, yeah, do you do the modeling yourself, for example, the solutions people came up with? Could you implement them and show the results, or is it... Yeah, uh, we, we did the modeling itself, just visualization, without putting it uh, uh, in layer, for example, but the best solutions, they were implemented on the iPhone, so that uh, people could see what they were most uh, enthusiastic about. But of course, it's a, it's a visualization of things you could do. Of course, it costs a lot of money as well. So uh, we cannot do all solutions, but uh, I think the main thing, if, if you come up with a rainwater garden from Australia and it's not being implemented here in the Netherlands, it's very nice to implement the system like that and see how it looks like. So mostly for, for that and of course these are international pr uh, projects so we have, to say, uh, we have to speak the same language and see if uh, solutions from Australia would be applicable to, to the Dutch situation. That's, that's where it main, mainly is about. Yeah. So. Okay, that, I think that will conclude this uh, contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you.